Hi, I'm Jeff Garrett, and this is April the 2nd. And I'm so pleased to be joined today by Jackie Rhesus, a proud alum, undergraduate alum of the Wharton School, a member of our undergraduate executive board, and the head of Square Capital in San Francisco. So, Jackie, welcome. Hi, um, nice to see you. Uh, so, in addition to everything else, you know a lot about what's going on in the Bay Area economy because you're on the board of the San Francisco Federal Reserve. Could you give us your read of how things are tracking in San Francisco? We know that the number of confirmed cases is certainly slowing down. What's your prognosis for the Bay Area, Bay Area economy? Sure. I can extrapolate a bit from uh, some commentary that we discussed this morning on the Economic Advisory Council of the San Francisco Fed and also just looking at the data that UCSF releases, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Um, it feels like with the shelter-in-place orders that, that went in place mid-March officially, that folks in the Bay Area took those orders quite seriously and really started to reduce travel and reduce their um, uh, nets of relationships fairly significantly. And when you look at the cases that are actually in hospitals, um, the head of UCSF is actually commenting that they are under control, the number of beds are under control. And while I th still think there's a severe shortage of standard equipment, as we've all read in newspapers everywhere, it feels like it's in a controllable stance and has moderated from what they expected uh, to see any kind of increased slope. And so I think the Bay Area is actually under control. Los Angeles, from a data point of view, looks like it's in a very different state, though, in terms of number of cases. And I think they have to handle Los Angeles in a different way than they are handling um, Northern California. From an economic point of view, um, I think what we're seeing in the Bay Area is exactly the same that we're going to see across the country. And that is, you know, the great storm of a hard stop across the economy. And I think that's fairly unprecedented and something that we've never seen before. Uh, because even in the 08 recession, it, you saw waves of behavior start to cascade from banks and money markets and uh, fixed income funds cascade all the way out through the economy. What happened here is almost the opposite, which is an immediate hard stop of economic shutdown, which then cascaded from Main Street now through other elements of the economy. And I think the virus uh, will, you know, its, its depth and length will determine the gravity of the economic consequences that roll through the economy. I think that's still unknown. If you look at the level of shutdown, um, it's been, you know, minus 70 percent uh, around a whole bunch of data that's been released publicly by lots of sources. And I think you've seen an evolution of businesses that are able to adapt to online and not in-person commerce. Uh, but I think there's still such a significant shutdown that's happened against broad swaths of the economy. Um, that it's been extreme, and we're seeing the uh, the unemployment numbers increase to records this week that have never been seen before in any one week. And so, you know, it's unknown what will happen in terms of depth and length. Uh, so can we can we pivot to these, your day? Yeah. Can we pivot to your day job, Jackie? So Square Capital. Sure. Everyone knows about uh, Square Terminals, but Square Capital has been doing this incredible job of building a small business, lending to small businesses. And I know recently you got some preliminary bank-like status approval uh, where you can have FDIC guaranteed deposits, I presume. Congratulations on that. But, you know, it does look like Thank small you. businesses absolutely in the crosshairs right now. Um, what's your perspective on how important getting loans to small businesses will be in you know, minimizing the downside and, and increasing the chances of something like a V-shaped recovery? Yeah, I'm very thankful that uh, at all levels of the government, 
the urgency around getting financing to small businesses uh, could not be higher. And one of the first relief bills that Congress and the administration released was that around small business funding. There are two provisions of those agreements. Um, one is uh, $350 billion that will be released by the SBA, and the second is almost $500 billion that will be managed by the Treasury. Both highlight the absolute dire need to get hands quickly and at scale across to small businesses. I think the cascade that's expected and what we're already starting to see is that uh, the lifeblood of the U.S. economy is managed by small businesses, whether it be employment or contribution to the economics of, um, of GDP. And so what we started to see with the hard stop shutdown several weeks ago is that those businesses immediately had a cash flow crunch. And typically small businesses only have a month of financing at their discretion where if their revenue is shut down, they have a month's worth of money in their bank accounts. And so they feel the funding shortage severely and acutely. And so our goal in working with the administration and banks across the country is to make sure that we could try to execute on a small business emergency financing plan as soon as possible. And so we've been working to do that. There's still a lot of complexity in how that happens, and we've been working through it all week at different levels of the government and with banks. Um, but I, I feel like the urgency is understood and extreme, and we will only start to see the cascades through other segments of the economy beyond Main Street America, travel, oil and gas, airline, um, and I, you know, I, I, I do think um, we're working through this and hope to get financing in the hands of small businesses all across the United States. Okay, so let, last question from me would be about the impact on the tech scene and startups. So everything you've just said about small business, you'd think would apply even more to startup land because uh, typically that's, uh, that's about eyeballs, it's about revenue, it's not about cash. Um, do, you, do you think this is going to have a, a, a – you, know, you can see some upside disruption from the crisis for the tech sector, but what about the downside risk for startups in this environment? Um, I think all startups are looking at their liquidity, no matter how well-funded they are today and no matter how profitable they are today. I think liquidity is absolutely essential for startups. There, I think there will be a bipolar distribution of outcomes. You'll have one set of companies that hunkers down, manages cash flow, and make sure they have several years of liquidity to operate in any market environment. The second set of companies, and we've already started to see this, are those that don't have sustainable models that can withstand the immediate shock to the, the revenue system. So we started to see uh, about a week and a half ago a significant number of startups and, frankly, even larger tech companies um, cut back on hiring and cut back on employees that are currently on their books. And that's the most immediate variable expense lever that they could pull. I think, it, you know, depending on the funding environment for uh, their liquidity, um, you know, some aren't going to survive. Uh, and I think, you know, it depends on how quickly people are able to respond and how much capacity they have to respond as to whether they could adjust from this environment. Having said that, amazing companies are born out of environments like this, and amazing ideas are born out of environments like this. Where was started in 2009 in the face of the Great Recession uh, and so in times like this, good ideas still can win, and there's lots of room to create good ideas and to focus on things where entrepreneurs think will have a great impact on businesses and, and consumers going forward. So like I know at Square, we're super excited about focusing on the things that help sellers and consumers and leaning into that and making sure 
that we're positioning ourselves for what we believe the future of commerce to look like going forward. That's a fantastic place to end, Jackie. Uh, thanks a million for your time today, and thanks for all you're doing for small businesses all around. Just fantastic work. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff.